This video was brought to you by Nebula. For the last few weeks, France has been consumed by nationwide protests against President Macron's pension reforms, which would simplify France's convoluted pension system and increase the minimum pension age from 62 to 64. Despite these protests, though, Macron has stubbornly persisted, and last week he took things a step further by using a constitutional technicality known as Article 49.3 to force his reforms through the National Assembly without a vote. Now, as you'd expect, this triggered a furious reaction from the French public, who have been protesting almost non-stop since, with more protests actually planned for later this week. Now, we've already got another video on the protests themselves, which you can check out if you want to know more about that. But in this video, we're going to focus specifically on the pension reforms themselves and try and figure out whether Macron is actually right when he says that the current system is just unaffordable. Now, if you've only seen the headlines about the French pension debate, you probably don't know what the French are whinging about. In English-speaking media, all you hear is that Macron wants to increase the pension age from 62 to 64. And, um, well, that probably sort of makes sense. After all, 62 sounds pretty generous and is far lower than other similar European countries. In Germany, for example, the pension age is 65 and 7 months. In Italy, it's 67. And in the UK, it's 66 right now but it's set to be increased to 67 sometime before 2028. Well, it was set to increase, but depressingly, it might not actually end up happening because life expectancy in the UK is actually now lower than it was in 2011. Anyway, in this context, even Macron's new target of 64 sounds a bit low and quite a bit lower than European counterparts. It's also not like the French have a significantly lower life expectancy than their European peers. According to World Bank data from 2020, the average French person can expect to live 82 years and two months, which is slightly lower than the Italians and the Spaniards, who can expect to live 62 years and four months, but significantly higher than, say, the Germans and the Brits, who can expect to live 80 years and 10 months. Yet the idea then, the French system looks pretty good, given that it's lower than the European average, despite the fact that the French live longer than many of us. However, when you dig a little deeper, it's not quite that simple. In France, 62 is the minimum pension age. And if you want to retire at this age, you have to have worked for 168 quarters, or 42 years which is a long time, because in practice, this means working non-stop from the age of 20. And from 2027, this number will increase to 43 years, which means that you have to work non-stop from the age of 19 if you want to get your full pension at 62. And when you do retire, you'll receive essentially 50% of your average salary over your best paid 25 years. So, for example, if you're paid €20,000 for your first 18 years of work, but then €50,000 for your final 25, you'd receive a state pension roughly equivalent to €25,000 a year, guaranteed by the state. However, if you don't work enough quarters before you retire, every quarter you don't work will lose you the equivalent of 0.625% of your total pension. In other words, for every year you don't work, you lose 2.5% of your total pension. So if you've worked 38 years instead of 42, you'd receive 40% of your average salary over your best paid 25 years instead of 50%. The other way to guarantee your full pension though is just to work until 67, which is sort of the maximum retirement age in France and allows you to get a few extra quarters in in order to meet the quota. It's also worth noting that during their working lives, French workers also have to pay in a significant fraction of their salaries into both their pension and the state more generally, 
That's because according to the OECD's tax wedge, which is basically a measure on tax on labor income, France has a tax wedge of 47%, well above the OECD average of 34.6%. So you're probably beginning to get the idea here. It's not as simple or generous as you might assume. Nonetheless, the French system is still more generous than most European pension schemes. 50% of your best 25 years is a high mark. And despite the caveats we mentioned to incentivize French workers to work longer, the average pension age in France is still just 60 years and six months. And because of this, according to the OECD, the French spend the equivalent of 14% of their GDP on pensions, one of the highest in the world, and roughly double the OECD average. So even in France, where government spending accounts for something like 60% of GDP, well above the European, let alone global average, these pensions are very expensive. And the problem is that it's only going to get more expensive as France's population ages. Despite loads of financial incentives, France's fertility rate, i.e. the average number of children a French woman can expect to have in her lifetime, is just 1.8. Now, while that's higher than the European average, it's still lower than the replacement rate of 2.1, which means that without a massive increase in fertility rate or net immigration, France's population will get steadily older in the coming years. And this trend will only be accelerated by further increases in life expectancy, which means longer retirements, more pensioners, and more expensive pensions. Today, 26% of French people are over 60, but by 2040, it's expected to be more like 33%. And that means that as France's population ages, there'll be fewer working age people paying tax in order to support the growing number of pensioners. Already, there are only 1.7 people in work in France for every pensioner, down from 2.1 in 2000. And that figure is projected to fall to 1.3 by 2070. Ultimately then, that's why the government currently forecasts a pension budget deficit of over 13 billion euros by 2030, or about 0.5% of GDP. You get the idea then, the French system is indeed expensive, and it's only gonna get more expensive as France gets older. In this light then, Macron's solution seems pretty sensible. His reforms will resolve the budget issue and put France more in line with their European neighbors. However, there are other ways of balancing the books. Instead of making workers work longer, you could reduce pension payments or tax someone else, like rich multinational companies. In fact, protesters often point out the fact that pensioners have been the main beneficiaries of France's recent housing and asset boom, and argue that the books could be balanced if Macron properly taxed his multinational corporate buddies at places like McKinsey. And more generally, there's just a sense that this isn't how things were supposed to go. Progress towards a better society was supposed to involve higher productivity, less work, and longer retirements. In this light, then, raising the retirement age seems sort of backwards, like tacitly admitting the end of progress, which leaves us with a difficult balance. Macron thinks he's being pragmatic and balancing the books as things get increasingly complicated and increasingly expensive. But the protesters equally think that there are other ways to solve this issue, and that things just could be better. The question is whether they really could be. If that's not enough TLDR for you for one day, then you ought to check out our new series, This Week in Parliament, which has just made a magnificent return. That's not a quote or anything, that's just a thing I'm saying. Anyway, This Week in Parliament is a show where we run down exactly what happened in Parliament in the preceding week, breaking down the debates, laws, and bills which otherwise you'd have totally missed, and explaining what really happens in Britain's seats of power when you brush aside all of the shouting and arm-waving. New episodes of that come out every week only on Nebula. But that's not all. There's also the extended version of the daily briefing every single weekday, a bunch of exclusive explainer videos, some totally silly fun content, and all of our videos totally ad-free. 
And it's not just TLDR either. We're joined by a whole bunch of your favorite creators, from Wendover and Real Life Law to Johnny Harris, which means that on Nebula, there's a whole ton of exclusive videos, early access to loads of creators, and all of the ad-free viewing you could possibly handle. And signing up using our link gets you access for just $2.50 a month. Not only that, this is the absolute best way you can support the channel. So thanks for watching and we'll see you soon on Nebula.